Good evening, everyone. Pastor Anderson Walker, the senior pastor of the New Harvest Church of God. It is such a joy to come into your homes this evening. Uh, come with the word uh, from God to be a blessing to you. We thank you not only the New Harvest Church of God family, but all others who have decided to tune in. We thank you so very much for making us a part of your Wednesday, your Wednesday evening as we get into the word of God. We want to say that how much we thank God for you. Uh, please uh, get your Bibles, get a pencil, get a pad, tune in, give someone a call, have them to tune in as well, that we just get some nuggets and just get into God's Word and to be blessed. Amen. We're excited that you decided to join us tonight. Let us pray. Father, we just give you glory and praise. We thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for Jesus. Amen. We thank you for your great love wherein you loved us. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. For we are your workmanship created in Christ Jesus under good works, which you preordained that we should walk in them. We thank you, God, that we have been crucified with Christ. But nevertheless, we live in the life we now live. We live by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. Holy Spirit, we thank you right now that you're unctionizing every word. You're blessing every ear to hear, every heart to believe, and we give you glory and praise for it. We thank you, Father, right now that this word shall go forth and be a blessing unto thousands and thousands upon thousands, dear God, that's going to be blessed, liberated, uh, 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 delivered, dear God, and, and, and just to be blessed through your word. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, we thank you for joining us tonight. And as we get into the Word tonight, we want to talk about an active faith bears fruit, but I want to deal with character fruit, character fruit. And we want to deal with that some tonight, and we believe that you're going to be blessed by it so greatly, so, so greatly, greatly, greatly. And, and let's get into it tonight, and let's talk about a few things tonight. We may want to talk about what is character, what does character mean? Listen to this now. Your character goes beyond your words. Character is actually your behavior on display. We understand that sometimes we can, we can make our mouth say something or anything. But character is that is a consistency of you that is on constant display, whether it's a response or action or a reaction. It is the real you when no one else is, is looking. Here's another one for character. A vis character should be a visible demonstration of godly values on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. Did you get that? It, is, it, it is, is a visible demonstration. This is what character should be for the believer. A visible demonstration listen, of godly values on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. Well, let's say something else about character. Here, here's a surprise to you. Character is not a product of, of, your, of, of the new creation, of the new birth. You don't get character because you, because you receive Jesus. No, you already have character. But your character, it can be, can be renewed or developed in a godly way when you're born again. Oh, you were known for something before you received Jesus. And what you were known for was an expression of your character. So then we have character anyway. But we want to talk about having a godly character. A, a character that's been a, a part of our behavior that is on display, that has been affected by the Holy Spirit through the Word of God. Let's talk about something else. Here it is. This, this is very, very important. We understand that character is the consistency of your behavior. Amen. The consistency of your behavior expresses your character, and your character expresses your Lord. It ties in together. You, 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 that's why it's so important to understand a person that is not that that is not born again, that have not received Jesus as their Savior, cannot express the character of God. They cannot express the fruit of the Spirit. How that's where we're going to the night. We're going to talk about the fruit of the Spirit that is to be expressed through our character. Amen. Let's get into that tonight. We understand it from the book of uh, Galatians, chapter five. Verses 22 through verse 24 is what we we're going to begin to talk about tonight. Understand that it says that fruit of the Spirit, fruit of the Spirit. Notice now, it didn't say anything about the deeds of the flesh. It said of the Spirit, 
which let us know right off the right off right, right from the very start now, it's a product of your recreated human spirit. I know that sometimes people say, well, the, well, the fruit of the spirit is evidence of the Holy Spirit. Well, well, then you're born again by the Holy Spirit. But 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 to say that the fruit of the spirit is evidence of you being filled with the spirit is altogether something different. The fruit of the spirit is the product of your recreated human spirit by the Holy Spirit. So when you were born again, you recreated, your spirit was made alive in union with God by the Holy Spirit. And when you were born up, when you was born of God, these fruits, for lack of a better word, was deposited in your recreated human spirit. These fruits was deposited. And they were deposited by the Holy Spirit in which you was born again. Now, now listen to this now. Because you was born again, that means then that the seed of each one of these fruits are already in you. The thing is, are they maturing? Are they growing? Are they on display? Are you letting them come alive on the inside of you? Every last one of them is in you right now, if you're a believer. Yes, they are. The key thing is, how do we develop them? How do we let them manifest? How do we let them become a part of our daily character? Because we're on display for God's glory and for God's kingdom. Understanding this, the fruit of the Spirit, here it is now, the fruit of the Spirit is an outward indicator of your salvation. An outward indicator of your salvation is expressed through the fruit of the Spirit, which is expressed through your development of your character. Okay? And as we go through these, we kind of put them in three different categories. Because it is of extreme importance that we understand that the fruit of the Spirit is a part of your recreated human spirit. Okay? Because understand now, before I was born again, I couldn't express them. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become what? New. So when you were born again by the Holy Spirit, amen, so you recreated human spirit, was deposited, the fruits of the spirit was deposited inside your recreated human spirit. Amen. So now we can display the character that God has called for the believer to display. Amen. He's very, very specific about that. A born-again believer, bring, we bear fruit with the capacity to manifest every fruit in difficult situations. Everyone can be lovable when things are nice. How about being lovable when things are not so nice? How about being lovable when things are going against the grain? That's when the fruit of the Spirit kicks in. Amen. We develop them. We allow it to mature in our lives. So when the, the issues of life happens, we don't act, what's that word again? Out of character. But we behave in character. Listen to what it says in Ephesians chapter 2. She says, for by, for by grace we were saved through faith. Not of works, let any man should boast. And, and, and Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, under good works, which he preordained that we should walk in them. That God had a holy life established for every believer before we were ever born into this earth. He had a plan for you. He had a plan to develop your character, to express his glory, to express his kingdom, to impact your entrusted territory. Character is the real you when no one else is looking. Amen. Amen. The consistency of your behavior. Then, then we go on to, to Colossians chapter 1, verses 2 to verse 14. Where Christ has delivered us from the power and the authority of darkness, translated us and to the kingdom of, of his dear son of his love. And it says, we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. So when you receive Christ, he delivered you from the power and authority of the enemy, brought us into the kingdom of his dear son of his love. We have redemption through his blood. Now he places the fruit inside your recreated human spirit. So then every born again believer has love. Because Romans says, for the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So how is that love developing? There's sometimes I think that the issues of life test and push the button in our love to let us know that we need to grow. Amen. We need, we need to increase our love. That love needs to flourish on the inside of us. 
So the, let's talk about this here because we have been delivered. So the, in Galatians chapter 5, begin with verse 22, says this. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Then it says joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. There is not a power that exists anywhere, not even from the pen of hell, that could stop these fruit from being manifested in your life. If you're a born-again believer, there's no power listed from earth to hell to anywhere that could stop you from manifesting these fruit in your territory, that your territory will be blessed because you are there. Amen. Each one of these fruits can impact your life. And as it impacts your life, it's going to impact your territory. I like to view it this way at times, and, and, and we deal with that, that the fruit of the Spirit is love with eight other manifestations. Because without love, you cannot manifest the rest of them. And God is love. Amen. So I like to look at it that way. The fruit of the Spirit is love with eight manifestations. Because there's not a single manifestation that you can manifest without love. Love covers a multitude of all. Amen. Love works no ear toward his brother. Amen. God is love. His love being shed about in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Listen, listen, listen. Because if you love me, you won't harm me. You won't steal from me. You won't cheat. You won't do that if you love me. But here's one of the greatest things I want us to begin to gather is not just really how much you love God, but how much God loves you. He loved you so much, or loved us so much, that he deposited himself inside our recreated human spirit to express kingdom culture and character in the earth. So let's go through when it says that love. When it says that the fruit of spirit is love, it is the highest form of love. It's the agape love. It's the kind of love that God expressed toward us that Romans says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He did not wait till we become good. He did not wait till we were forgiven. He did not wait till we begin to act right. No. While we was filthy and dirty, while we was undone, while we was not fit to live and wasn't re- and, and, and wasn't fit to wasn't ready to die, he loved us. While we were doing everything that we thought that we could do, he expresses, he com- Romans also says. He commended his love toward us. He, he, he manifested. He showed his love toward us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. Amen. That's love. That's love. love runs so deep that you feed your enemy. You pray for your enemy. If he's hungry, you feed them. If he thirsts, you give him drink. You heat coals of fire on them. Why? Because heaven is real and, and hell is real, and you don't want anybody to go to hell. So we express what? The love of God. I look at it this way here. When you're dealing with these, these three. When you're dealing with love, listen to this. It expresses itself, listen to this, to allow the other traits to flourish. If there's no love for God, I understand the love of God, won't any of these other characteristics going to flourish? Not any of them. It would be, it would be stunted. It would be cut off. It would not flourish. It would not come into maturity if there is no love. So we understand the important thing is what? Love. Love. How can we love God who we not seen and hate our brother whom we see daily? The scripture says that that can't happen. Everything is based, the bedrock, the foundation is love. So he says here, the fruit of the spirit is love, which allow the others to grow properly. Then it says joy and peace. I like to look at those as those that is within you, those that strengthen you through difficult times. Because, see, see, our joy is not based on something outwardly. It's based on relational inwardly. Our peace is not based on difficult on situations or circumstance. Once again, it's based on our relationship. Amen. Uh, 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 Jehovah Shalom. God is our peace. He says in the book of John, he says, listen, my peace I give unto you, not as the world give it, give I unto you, but my peace I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Here it is now. Because when I trust the love of God, the peace of God is going to abide. 
when I understand how God loves, how much God loves me, I know I'm going to come out on the other end. I know I'm going to come out on top. I know I'm going to win. So if I know I'm going to win, how can I be so downcast in the moment? When I understand how much you love me, you're going to stop having a bad day. Even though opportunities come, you're just not going to receive them. You're just going to rest in the love of God. That's what he calls us to do. And then it says that not only, not only that his love of God, but it says that the joy. Nehemiah says, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. So we are so joyous and so strong and so strong and so joyous. It didn't say every, every situation may be joyous, but joy is that inner strength that we focus on God even in the difficulties because we know how much he loves us. Hallelujah. In those difficult times, we find the joy that his joy is being infused in us. We find that his peace is an inward, inward peace because of, 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 of his love for us and because of who he is to us. He gives us his peace. In the tough issues of life, rest in his joy, rest in his peace. Amen. So I like to look at those who are relational, all right, that, that our relationship with God is an inward force. Now, the next three, I like to look at how we express toward others. Because it goes on to say this right here, long suffering and gentleness and goodness. Notice now, notice, no, no, notice now when he says that long suffering. I like to put it this way right here. I like to put it this way right here, because because now when it says long suffering, long suffering simply means a relationship with others that I put up with you until you mature. I don't give up on you. No, I don't give up on you. I don't cast you aside. I don't say that there's no hope for you. Someone had to put up with me. Amen. And therefore, we have to put up with others until they mature. Which means when they make a mistake, we don't kick them out. We embrace and pull them in closer. Long suffering allows us to look beyond what they're doing because we see the potential on the inside of them. It does not mean we pacify the bad. It means that we get alongside them to help them grow, to mature, to what God called them to be or to become. So those are relational fruit there. Because if you're not, if, you, if you're not kind, if you if you if you there's no long suffering, if there is no what gentleness. You hear that? Gentleness. How do you handle someone? Are you so rough and you're not so abrasive that no one wants to be around you? Or are you kind that they love being in your presence? Even, even, even if they're going through a difficult task, do they feel comfortable bringing it to you? Or are you the first one that they want to dodge and not be around because, because you're not kind, you're not, you're not tender, you're not gentle with them? Can you think back over your life, there are some things that you went through that you're so happy that someone handled you in a gentle way, that they didn't run you off, but they embrace you when you made a mistake or didn't do something right? That's that same gentleness. Jesus would call a friend of sinners, which means it was something about him that drew them to him. He wasn't a part of their sin, but he was a light that drew them with such gentle words, with such kindness, with such great compassion and love that they came to him for deliverance. They came to him for help. They came to him for healing. How gentle are we today? How gentle are we? Will it, can a lost person come to you? Let's display Let's display now character fruits that allow them to come to us and we embrace them through the difficulties of life. Those are relational, not an inward relation, but relation on the outside. So, so when you're dealing with that, then it says goodness, goodness, just being good. Goodness, it's like, it's like, it's like a benevolent act. You're doing something for the benefit of someone else. It is not all about you. 
It's not all about you trying to get the advantage or you trying to get ahead or you trying to get ahead of someone or you trying to be on top. No, 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 no. When that happens, even your good work has a bad motive. So what about those benevolent acts that you're reaching out to help someone? Someone may be less fortunate, someone that may be in need. There should be a goodness about us that when we see someone else in pain, it, it, it hits us in the heart that we don't want to see anyone hurt. We don't want to see anyone downtrodden. We don't want to see anyone that is struggling. Because when we have something that we could help someone else with, let's be good. Let's be good stewards as well. Amen. Amen. These are relationships that we are to express to others. When they talk about long suffering, put up with this someone else mature. They talk about being gentle. Amen. Amen. Not being so abrasive. Then they talk about just being good, just being benevolent. These things are extremely important because, because when we understand those, then we're going to allow our character to be developed through the spiritual fruit that God has deposited inside our recreated human spirit. These are important. Now I deal with the last three. It says faith, meekness, and temperance. I like to look at those as, as this right here. My reactions to the difficulties of life. My reactions to the issues of life. How do I respond to them? Do I allow the issues in life, amen, watch this now. Do I allow the issues of life get me off my faith? Do I allow the issues of life have me to act unbecoming? That I'm no more, I'm no longer meek. Do I allow the issues of life to mess with my temperance, which simply means deal with your appetites that are not godly? There are things that we crave to get out of the situation. There's no temperance. There's no self-control. What I just can't help it. That means you lack self-control. I just have to give them a piece of my mind. You lack self-control. I just have to have the last word. You lack self-control. I have to defend myself. You lack self-control. Okay? You have to grow to a point that, listen, everything comes up, don't have to come out. Did you get that? God is our defender. He'll take care of us. You don't have to defend yourself. You don't have to, you don't have to fight every battle. Some battles just walk away from because it's, 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 it's not high enough for you to, even, to put even, get your attention. Amen. We're seated in heavenly places. If we were to do battle from our exalted position, there are a lot of things we wouldn't respond to. Why? We have self-control. Amen. Because they yell at you, that doesn't mean you yell back. Because they use profanity, doesn't mean you use it back. Because they get smart doesn't mean you get smart back. Have some what? Self-control. These things are important to us. Because when it deals with that, when it deals with that, is there anything that is taking you off of your faith? How about keeping you from being meek? Keeping you from just from just being gentle? Now, see, now, and I also kind of derive from the word of being humble. Okay? Humbleness doesn't mean that someone run over you. Humbleness really means to agree with God. That you're not, you're not so self-absorbed with yourself. But it means that you agree with God. So every the way God say handle it, humbleness says, you know what, Father, I agree with you. I'm going to handle it that way. Father, I agree with you. I'm going to do it that way. Father, I agree with you. I'm going to respond that way. Father, I agree with you. I'm going to do it that way. That's what humbleness really means when you're dealing with it. It doesn't mean you lay down and someone re run all over you. Humbleness simply means that you stand up for what, for what is right, that you're going to agree with God. I like to look at it this way. When, when the widow went to the unjust judge, she was humble in her going. Only thing she was doing was demanding what was rightfully hers. She didn't disrespect her. She just went to him and said, avenge me my adversary. Why? She had a right to be avenged. So these fruits of the Spirit is a part of our recreated human spirit. I want to drive that point home. 
when you was born again, your spirit was born again. The fruit of the spirit was deposited inside your recreated human spirit. It's our responsibility to allow those fruit to develop in us that it affect our character. Because when our character do begin to display love, we draw people. When it begin to display joy and peace, there's some inward inwardness about us that are, that get people's attention. When they understand that we're long suffering, we're gentle, we're kind, which means that we don't run people off, but we invite them. When it says about our faith, we're going to stand firm in our faith stand. About our meekness, that we are humble, and about our tempers, we don't we don't act out of character. These things are important. Every believer had the capacity of these fruit to grow to maturity. How do we affect the lives of others? We affect the lives of others by having these on display. I like to call these once again, character fruit. Your character, once again, is the real you when no one is looking, okay? Your character is not a product of being born again, but being born again will affect your character. Did you get that? The character is a display. Character is your behavior on display. Character is the consistency of your actions. So then, what's on display in your life tonight? Is it the real you about the fruit of the Spirit? Or is it something else? Allow the fruit of the Spirit to begin to be developed inside your recreated human spirit to develop kingdom culture in the earth that your territory will be blessed. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we just give you glory and praise. We thank you for this time, dear God, of coming, of coming before your people, O oh Lord, with a word tonight, Lord. We thank you, God, that this word is going to affect thousands upon thousands upon thousands. Our lives are being shifted right now through your word, through your word, character, fruit, Lord. You declared that you desire that we bear much fruit, much fruit, and let it begin with us through our character. In Jesus' name, amen. And we thank you so much for joining us tonight in the New Harvest Church God family. We thank you so much. And we want to, th we want to announce to you uh, even now that this coming Sunday will be the the, the, the last first Sunday of this year and, and be prepared to celebrate communion with us. Amen. As we begin to, to have our service on 9 a.m. Hey, and we're going to do, we're going to talk about that, have a, talk about that and have a wonderful time in the Lord. Also, we want to tell the New Harvest Church God family, be praying for our blessed Mullen family, Sister Evelyn Mullins. Amen. Her daughter, member of this church, Sister LaCarla went home to be with the Lord. Let's keep them uplifted in our prayers. Amen. Surround them with our love and our support. And to New Harvest family, we love you. And remember this, Jesus is Lord. God bless you tonight.